Good evening. Good evening and welcome to those of you who are watching Monty Python and haven't switched off yet. Uh, to those who've switched over for News at 10 and hit the wrong button. And to those who've gone away and set the video to record Twin Peaks and still haven't worked out how to use the timer. Uh, this week, Michael Heseltine takes time out to collect his thoughts and comes up with a new strategy to outwit Mrs. Thatcher. <laughs> After a Green Party spokesman falls 80 feet from a balcony, he bravely insists on being present at their press conference. <laughs> and in Washington, as Ronald Reagan begins a publicity tour for his new autobiography, there's a moment of panic when he gets his hand stuck in a car window. <laughs> as usual, four panellists chosen from a short list of four are here. <laughs> Uh, ready to show us what they're made of and hopefully take part in the quiz as well. Uh, on my right, our first team captain, the inimitable, the indomitable, the indefatigable, the inflatable Ian Hislop. <laughs> and with Ian, the man they call the comedy barrister, well, his clients do anyway, <laughs> Clive Anderson. <laughs> what about you? And to my left, someone whose happy go lucky charm over the past few weeks has completely failed to materialise, Paul Merton. Uh, and on <laughs> Paul's team this week, a broadcaster and journalist who's worked on so many newspapers, it would be quicker to mention the ones he hasn't worked for. So the Stamford Gazette, Potholing <laughs> Monthly, Forum Magazine, Pigeons Today, and the West Lothian Retail Tobacconist Journal, Russell Davies. <laughs> so let's wander aimlessly into the first round, Ian and Clive. Who are these people, and in what way do they deserve each other? Uh, they're all sticking into the knife in each other at BSB. Yeah, that's Robin Day, I recognise him. He's Selena the Frock. No, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, oh, there's more people. Rupert Murdoch and uh, a Brillo pad. <laughs> <laughs> are we supposed to be answering what they've got to do well, with each other? Well, at some stage during the show. <laughs> <be nice. laughs> it's it's almost too easy, because this is the exciting merger of uh, BSB and Sky. I think uh, one was losing £10 million a week and the other losing £5 million a week. They've got together to lose £15 million <laughs> a week. They've um, also um, combined their audiences, so that's yes. three now. Yeah. Yes. And all those people there are paid a fortune of money by their respective companies. Which is why they're losing £15 million a week, yes. No, it's because the programmes are no good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Two points. It's the annexation, or merger, as Rupert Murdoch likes to call it, of BSB by Sky Television. Uh, the axe is most likely to fall on BSB's Now channel, featuring Sir Robin Day and Selena Scott, which is apparently watched by just half a percent of all BSB viewers. So it's presumably being watched somewhere by a severed arm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul and Russell, another bunch of reprobates for you. Oh, um, mm. yes, this is the, the Sun campaign. They wanted, uh, some, they wanted everybody in Britain at 12 o'clock on Friday or something to sort of face France, stick two fingers up in the air and... Shout out up yours, Delors. <laughs> Twenty people gathered outside the gates of Wapping and did. Yes. And uh, <laughs> their own cameras were there to see it, and nobody else took any notice. Except Le Parisien, I think, newspaper in Paris, that replied by saying that all England's food was rubbish and all our women have got buck teeth, which I thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's an, an official secret, secret isn't, isn't it? That true? Yeah. The, the only story I did hear was that on the white cliffs of Dover, where everyone was meant to go, um, no one turned up, of course, so the paper had to get a whole load of the unemployed to go along. And the unemployed were meant to be complaining about how badly the economy is being run by Europe and how much better it would be by Mrs Thatcher on her own, which is quite an interesting <laughs> bit of logic, yeah, even for sun readers. Yeah, so also um, they, the French newspaper said uh, after those people had actually lined up along the uh, cliffs of Dover, uh, they would have been heard a lot more clearly if they'd taken one step nearer France. <laughs> Who says the French have no sense of humour? <laughs> Just about everyone, I think. Um, <laughs> right, You'll be joining in next, <laughs> Angus. <laughs> no, no, please. Uh, right, Ian and Clive, uh, in what way has this blonde god been wreaking havoc this week? Well, it, it's a bit of a giveaway, the, uh, the blonde hair and the eyebrows. Um, it's, it's Maggie. Ma <laughs> <laughs> Michael Heseldine's wife, I think. Um, well, he, 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 um, he criticised uh, his party chairman or something. He wrote a letter to his party chairman and then mm -hmm. pushed off to the Middle East where Saddam Hussein is collecting as many world statesmen as he can get there. <laughs> if he gets six together, he gets, he gets to keep one of them. And, um, I think my I don't know if it's time. Yeah, I don't think he actually went there, but it's retired presidents and prime ministers that go there. Yes. Edward Heath and uh, 
Uh, Tony t- Benn's the latest one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He's That's hoping for a stalking horse candidate to go. He's not the stalking horse, he's the stalking rubbish. <laughs> stalking That's my prepared joke rubbish. for this week, and, Very good. and I even censored it, so... <laughs> and it didn't work anyway, so yeah. there we go. Uh, <laughs> yes, but you can well, have I'm two points. Them, <laughs> two points Badly. to you. Well done, it's Michael Heseltine, yes. Polls show that uh, Michael Heseltine is now twice as popular as Mrs Thatcher. Steve Mrs Thatcher, Thatcher herself is twice as popular as Geoffrey Howe, and Geoffrey Howe is twice as popular as Douglas Hurd, which makes Douglas Hurd marginally more popular as a leader of the Conservative Party than the EC Lard Mountain. <laughs> Nigel Lawson, as he used to be known. Uh, Paul and Russell, uh, who's this man in a silly hat? Um, oh, oh, wow. Yes. This is uh, Terry Marsh shooting down a pole, but uh, emphatically <laughs> not shooting down anything else. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's uh, to be made quite clear. Does... The police uh, didn't have any evidence, so they've arrested him for killing Laura Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> BBC Two yeah. viewers will understand that, and everyone else will wonder what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, some of the pros- uh, prosecution evidence was so unreliable that one witness said that Warren's assailant looked like Rodney Marsh, who used to play football for QPR. <laughs> uh, no doubt the witness's attention was distracted by the complimentary boxing tickets delivered to him before the trial by Detective Sergeant Michael Carroll of West Ham Police Station. So, there you are. Bango, my chances of becoming a Freemason. Um, Which brings us caustically to the end of the first round. And, uh, well, Paul and Russell have four solid points, as do Ian and Clive, four solid points. If I had a... As usual, at this point in the proceedings, just when everything started to get going, we like to indulge in a little quiz show interrupt us as we alert the panel to their feet, which they have to perform this <coughs> evening. Uh, each team is shown a photograph. Paul and Russell, this is yours. Uh, Ian and Clive, yours is this. And between now and the end of the programme, in the privacy of your own brain, we'd like you to come up with a caption or two. Let's uh, slip into our rubber galoshes now and descend into the steamy bowels of... Fleet Street for a look at the week's tabloid headlines. One each. Paul, yours is uh, the banana bandit who slipped up. What's that all about? Um, This is the man who went into a bank um, and said, give me all your money, I've got a banana here. (laughs) And I gave him all the money and then he next door to the greengrocers and held them up with a cash load of money in his hand like that. Um, (laughs) 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 Yes, the banana, it's a man who... a banana, he went in with a banana. Yeah. Something yes. like that. Yes. It's happened, it's happened yes, every week, there's a story about it. <laughs> he went, it's, a man, it's a man who went in with a banana. It's <laughs> just plain as that, really. And then he fired it at Frank Warren, didn't he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. No, he no, didn't. No, no, he didn't. Sorry, no. Well, didn't. That, was, that was Rodney Marsh. It was a five. <laughs> also, they five shooter. Uh, yeah, you, well, I'll give you one point for that. The banana bandit was Carl uh, Lancaster, who, despite the headline, in fact, uh, allegedly held up a Shell petrol station with a cucumber. Uh, apparently, he pointed at the cashier and said, if you don't give me a lot of money, I will shoot you. Whereupon the cashier gave him £60, obviously scared of cucumbers. <laughs> uh, police later recovered his carrier bag containing his entire arsenal, a bunch of bananas, a cucumber and a sawn-off aubergine. <laughs> uh, Russell, a spiritually uplifting headline for you. <laughs> Exempt, the Holy Church of Nome. Ah. I think this is a, a dodge, well, perhaps not a dodge, better not say a dodge, a ruse. Mm-hmm. Um, a method devised by a postman, I think, in Scarborough for uh, getting round the poll tax. He, uh, he lives amid a mass of uh, beautiful garden gnomes. Uh, and they are, these are an object of great reverence to him. In fact, he's, he's named himself the Grand Imperial Alligator of the uh, <laughs> Holy Church of the Lacquered Gnome. And um, <laughs> his wife is the Grand Imperial Alligatrice, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> they run this thing as a as a holy uh, sepulchre, and it's purely accidentally by uh, by accident, by as a, a freak of uh, nature, it so happens that it makes them free of uh, poll tax. Uh, poll tax. <laughs> it's, wow. it's excellent answer. Well done. Yes, two full points. The, the extremely reverend William Kibble, his name is, and uh, his good lady wife Dawn, who've won the first round of their battle to avoid paying. Uh, paying poll tax on the grounds that they're members of a religious order dedicated to the worship of garden gnomes. <laughs> Evidently, it's possible to exempt yourself from poll tax if you can prove that you don't work and that you occupy yourself so 
only in idle contemplation and long periods of inactivity. So as a postman, he's halfway there, isn't he? <laughs> uh, can you identify with this, Clive? Uh, I know how it feels to be a I woman. He's um, the chairman of BSB after he got screwed by Murdoch. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's, uh, that's Ian off on uh, one of his nine favourite subjects. The other, <laughs> the other eight being Robert Maxwell. Um, no, I'd, no I'd, I'd like to adopt that I'm answer. Have to say. Uh, it's got a cheap and easy laugh. It's uh, Pete Townsend. It is Pete Townsend. Yes, he's, he's uh, been interviewed in some book where he said that he's had some various... Um, Assassinations. Assassinations? Assignations. It's a word you don't so, often um, hear young people use. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, Terry Marsh doesn't use well, it I at all. I, <laughs> I, did, I did metal Never. work, so I don't really know. Um, <laughs> yes, he's, sort of, he's yes. had some sort of secret gay life, and he somehow feels yeah. that this I'll, makes him close to being a woman. I'll give you two points for that. It's Pete Townsend, guitarist with the popular beat combo, The Who, uh, who declared that he is no longer a man. He said, I know how it feels to be a woman because I am a woman. <laughs> That's come as a bit of a shock. I'm glad he's given up drugs. Well, if you give me the full headline, of course I'd have got that. Yes, well, that would have been too easy. Yes, the PA, his PA added that there's a little man in all of us. Talking of whom, Ian. An award winning play on words for you. Oil looks well for Prince Philip. Now, this is the royal family who struck oil. It's called yeah. the Civil List. Uh, <laughs> striking gold. I was striking gold. <laughs> they do work very hard. They do, yeah. particularly yes, Fergie. <laughs> and the police do a wonderful job. Yeah, they yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just interested in my knighthood. I'm <laughs> determined to get there before you, Angus. If I could just... <laughs> uh, I'm but, afraid uh, you back uh, to you the got question. to the Woolwich advert before... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Glad you <said> anybody. <laughs> I think, I think that's awfully unfair that. <laughs> to bring up the Woolwich advert yes. now. <laughs> yes, I don't remember yeah. that advert. Uh, well, it's obviously we've struck oil on royal lands, and uh, this is going to be uh, help um, the royal family to live in the style to which they're already accustomed. Right. <laughs> yes, well, you're absolutely right. Uh, I'll give you one point. Can anyone tell us where it actually is? Windsor. Struck? It's Windsor Castle, yes, one point each then. It's the discovery that uh, the Queen's residence at Windsor Castle could be sitting on a massive oil well worth billions of dollars. So that should pay for a few more of Fergie's holidays. Um, <laughs> one explanation is that an enormous residue of oil has built up from years of royal documentaries by Alistair Burnett. <laughs> <laughs> In, in response, Saddam Hussein has pointed out that Berkshire is historically part of Iraq. <laughs> and that brings us staggering to the end of round two. And I can tell you that uh, Paul and Russell are out front with ten, and Ian and Clive are a little behind with six. Time now for our so-called connections round, in which each team is forced to sit through a tasteless montage of seemingly unrelated clips, wherein lurks a major news story of the week. Ian and Clive, dismember this. It is time for oh, that's Saddam Hussein. He's got the moustache of the man dictator. Uh, that's John Lennon. Paul McCartney went by there. And oh, Lennon, I recognise yes. that. That's your child, and that's... Oh, Sir Peter Hall. Yeah, uh, this is clearly an RSC story. Oh, there's a. This is definitely RSC moving out of Barbican and running off to. Uh, um, I know what that is because there's a clue there, and there's a sort of odd-looking Conservative MP. He's the mm -hmm. one who. Um, is he called Stokes or something he like is. that? John Stokes, yep. and he told people to stop blubbing about uh, their loved ones being murdered by Saddam Hussein and just get on with it and have a stiff upper lip yes. uh, like we all did in the war. And what he and did, which was fairly amazing for a Conservative MP, was quote Shakespeare. Yes, I, well, even, I thought it was I'm softly, softly. softly. <laughs> <laughs> what yes. he forgot was at the end of the speech there's a bit about the seventh age of man, yes. which is when you become a doddering, <laughs> senile old Tory backbencher. <laughs> Yes, uh, it is Sir John Stokes, MP for uh, the 17th century, as he's known in the Commons, apparently, uh, who's been complaining about the mewling and puking, to quote him in Shakespeare, of Gulf hostages' families. Mm. He, uh, he paid tribute instead to the dignified silence of Second World War wives and confusing John McCarthy with a certain famous oh. pop singer called on those with relatives in the Gulf to behave like the wife of Paul McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the keyboards very badly and ruining your husband's records. <laughs> Uh, Paul and Russell, unravel this. John Stokes? Yeah. High Court judges? Um, no. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, um, that's a young frontbencher. Oh, another one. Oh. They're all 
Peter. John McEnroe. Yeah. I don't know. Um, oh, that's the old thing, yes. That's the Home Secretary. Yes. Um, oh, wait, another Disney character. <laughs> <laughs> Several more. I had to know his question. Sir Alistair Burnett, look at him. <laughs> yes, there was a survey um, where um, people were stopped in the street and asked if they could name any members of the cabinet, and they couldn't, and then they asked if they could name any of the seven dwarfs, which they could which proves that the seven dwarves are more popular than members of the cabinet. One person said sleepy and got a vote on Sir Geoffrey Howe as well. <laughs> <laughs> but then he resigned, so... <laughs> yes. Then there was Creepy, which yeah. was Cecil Parkinson. Yeah. <laughs> Dopey. Oh, uh, <laughs> any of them. Um, <laughs> Grotesquely sycophantic, that was another one. <laughs> Grump, grumpy, that's uh, Margaret Thatcher herself. <laughs> uh, 99 out of 200 got the whole seven... Dwarfs, right? I thought that was pretty good. Dozy Colin Boynton, Mick Titch, oh. I'm going to give up. <laughs> <laughs> All of those people, yes. Well, very good, uh, and uh, that brings us to the end of that round. So, uh, Paul and Russell now have 12 points, and Ian mm -hmm. and Clive still have eight. Time now to sift sadly through the debris of yesteryear in our archive round. One piece of film per team. Ian and Clive. Who's this singing Santa Claus? On the twelfth day of Christmas, my taxman sent to me Twelve bills for payment, eleven last reminders Ten checks for signing, ten forms for filling Eight large policemen, seven VAT men, six burly bailiffs Five high court writs, four tax returns Three more bills, two summonses and a rebate of 21 p. Thank you very much. That's so easy. That was just so easy. That's Father Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> very good. He's got his costume and everything. <laughs> uh, uh, but you know who it really is, don't you, Ian? I can tell. Well, I, I, so think, underneath. Yeah. I think I've seen photographs of this in the past. I think that is, amazingly, Sir Geoffrey Howe. Let's, uh, let's see if you're right. Five high court ribs, four tax returns. <laughs> <laughs> and a rebate of 21 p. Thank you very much. And uh, that's why he had to resign, apparently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was going to say, don't give up your day job, because he already has, isn't it? <laughs> um, Santa Howe, though, yes, showing uh, he does appreciate a joke, just doesn't realise when he looks like one. <laughs> uh, right, Paul and Russell, why is this man being serenaded so beautifully? Um, this is National Sing to a Git Day. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Although I'll give you a point for entertaining us, but um, uh, what's, the, what's the actual answer? Any well, idea? Was it plant a tree in Judging by His Hairstyle 63? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that sort of idea. Was, was he looking it after could be the 83 environment? or 91? Safe, safe paper, I thought I saw a safe paper sign or something. Um, yes. It's recycling, isn't it? Well, I'll let, I think I'll let uh, Michael himself tell us the answer. Well, so when I came here, as a matter of fact, we were using 40 million copies of photocopying paper uh, in the department in a year. We've now got saved about 25% of that. And the fascinating thing is that the Friends of the Earth have calculated, although I must confess I didn't do it myself, that we've actually saved 850 trees because of the photocopying paper we're no longer using. Oh, Bravo. well done. Bravo, Bravo indeed. <laughs> Yes, uh, Michael Heseltine boasting about the amount of paper he saved and proving there that uh, he cares for the simple things in life. Trees, fields, woods, which is presumably why he owns so many of them. <laughs> uh, so at the end You'll of be able to get a round, few from your Woolwich ads, I should think. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you've been mentioning it again. Uh, so I do wish you'd stop bringing up the Woolwich Clive. <laughs> <laughs> They're a very sound company. I'm with uh, you there. <laughs> They are some uh, awfully bad adverts, but they're quite a good company. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, uh, let me tell you that the score, well, uh, Paul and Russell still preside with 13, and Ian and Clive languish in second place with 10. So we chug merrily onto our odd one out round. Four familiar faces each, one of them doesn't fit. Who and why is what we want to know. Paul, four uh, political pals for you. Norman Willis, 
Norman Tebbit, Norman Helsham, oh no, Lord <laughs> Helsham, and Kenneth Baker. They've all had um, male contraceptives named after them. There's the <laughs> Helsham Double Strength, the <laughs> Tebbit Luminous, the the Willis Jumbo. Baker Lubricated, yeah. I yeah. would guess. Yeah. And Big Willis. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough, smart. That's, that's and the, the gag you're aiming at, I just don't know. Uh, the answer is Norman Tebbit. All the others are keen amateur poets. That's the answer. Norman Willis wrote a poem called uh, Thoughts Upon a Comradely Address, which I think he read out on your programme. Yes, he? he did, yes, he did. And you didn't get the answer by it still. <laughs> it's extraordinary. It's a very, very interesting poem all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a very it was good the poet. highlight of Channel 4's uh, autumn season, in my opinion. There we are. Um, <laughs> what, what, my show, or just that bit of it? No, 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 no. Channel uh, 4 does do some very good programmes. <laughs> Interspersed with building society advertisements. <laughs> <laughs> and thank God they do. Yes, uh, Kenneth, <laughs> Kenneth Baker is uh, too embarrassed about his work to let anyone else read it, while Lord Hailsham demonstrated an interesting line in love poetry when he wrote, Sing a song of particles, infinitely small, tissue culture specimens from off your stomach wall. <laughs> And I could continue, but in case any viewers are eating while they're watching this, I'll, uh, I'll leave it there. Uh, Russell, here's four for you to savour. David Shepherd, Bishop of Liverpool, Princess Anne, Anthony Blunt, and the boy Archer. <laughs> the boy Archer again? You're quite mm. fond of him, aren't you? Yes, um, um, we like nope. Archer. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bishop, of, uh, the bishop of Liverpool, before he was the Bishop of Liverpool, was uh, an England cricketer of the kind that we could do with now, mm -hmm. namely a batsman. Uh, <laughs> thereby hangs the answer, I suspect, because uh, Princess Anne used to fall off horses in the great national cause. She did. Uh, falling into the water and welly thrown as well, evidently. Um, Before she did Jeffrey, motor racing. Jeffrey Archer. <laughs> Down the M4. Jeffrey Archer, I think, I mean, it probably happened in Oxford where his more fabled exploits all did happen, or not <laughs> as the case may be, um, <laughs> once ran round a field for England and fell back exhausted. Yes. So I run against think Sweden. that I three can... of them uh, represented their country at sport and Blunt represented Russia at spying. <laughs> <laughs> yep, good. very good indeed. Yes, uh, two four points. Blunt uh, mm. sent scores of British agents mm. to almost certain death and as a result was viciously mm. knighted. Um, <laughs> Clive, a fab foursome for you. John Lennon. John Lennon, yes. Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr. And Degsy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, you made this too. Obviously, I can't get the obvious if one. You, if you could avoid uh, the obvious one. Yes. The obvious one, uh, one of them isn't a musician, but that would be uh, Ringo Starr. <laughs> um, Derek Gosh. Hatton hasn't been charged with anything, has he? Or was he arrested? Certainly not with fraud. No. That would be appalling. He was... <laughs> were he to be? He helped the police for a couple of minutes. With uh, their inquiries. No, of he's he going to be their new PR man, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Ringo not... Starr, I don't think he's ever been charged with anything, has he? Not yeah. so far as we're aware. No. Um, um, so does that mean he's the one who's the odd man out? He is the odd one out. I'll give you one point. He's not from Liverpool. Um, all the others went to the same grammar school, the yeah. Liverpool Institute. Ringo, of course, went to drumming school, but that doesn't count. But then neither could he, by the sounds of it. Right, finally, Ian. Enoch Powell. Oh, Neil yes. Kinnock. Yes. David Owen. Mm. And Winston Churchill. Well, all four of them have been tipped as future Prime Ministers, apart from Neil Kinnock. <laughs> 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 Is that not? It's, no. a, it's an excellent I know comment, this is. They've, they've all changed, changed, changed parties. They've changed all changed parties, apart from mm. Neil Kinnock, who wishes he could. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Churchill changed from Liberal to Conservative. Enoch Powell from Conservative to Ulster Unionist. While David Owen changed from Labour Party to SDP. To SDP Liberal Alliance Party. To Independent SDP. <laughs> to Isolated Megalomaniac with No Party Party. <laughs> Which uh, fascinating information brings us to the end of another round and uh, Paul and Russell are still the four dogs with 15 and uh, Ian and Clive are still the stalking horses with 13. And so we leapfrog joyfully into our final deciding round in mm -hmm. which we show each team a set of headlines with one or two words missing. They have to identify those words or provide their own alternative. As ever on this programme, in the interests of inequality, the team who stand to lose most go first. So, uh, Ian and Clive, stand by. All right, yes. Voters want Thatcher to what? Explode. <laughs> not, not explode. I Paul. said that without moving my brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, to go. Mm, 
quit is the answer. Quit. Yeah, quit. I'll give you, BB, give you uh, one for that. Next, uh, attention drifts as Kinnock speaks to his what? Uh, elbow. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, anyway. Uh, Heart's content. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he does that every Speak day. Speak to his friends. I'll Until give you one for friends because almost it's plant, it, in fact, is the answer. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean friends is almost plant? <laughs> Get no, that. honestly, Paul, plants are our friends. <laughs> <laughs> they turn carbon dioxide into oxygen and they keep us alive. Have you ever met Prince Charles? You <laughs> right, next, I've let them eat... In the let them eat what? <laughs> <laughs> so did I. <laughs> next, let them eat what for school dinner? Kenneth Clark. <laughs> Uh, no, right. food. Fear, fear right? is the fear. right answer. Um, yes, I'll give you a point for that, Paul. Let and finally, know. wife of Saddam snaps up a £350 million pound what? Country. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jules. Be, uh, Jules is correct. Jules, well done. Yes. Paul and Russell, your turn. Mm. Flying doctor prescribes a two week what for Fergie? Mm. Orgy. <laughs> Skiing holiday. <laughs> no, she's already had nine of those. <laughs> It's not a holiday, mm. then. Uh, I'll give you one Fortnite. for holiday. Jaunt is the right answer. Mm -hmm. Next, Cliff is still a big what at 50? <laughs> oh, really? Disappointment. <laughs> Nelly. <laughs> not Nelly, no. Hit. Hit Lemming. is correct, very good. Oh. Uh, next, Sooty's secret hold on whom? The ex <laughs> exchange rate. Larry <laughs> H. Corbett's uh, private Corbett. parts. Uh, Corbett. Corbett. Clive, Corbett. I'll give you, you jumped in first there. Corbett is correct. And lastly, local <laughs> party puts a what up Hesseldine? Turning. <laughs> Rocket. Rocket. Rocket is the Extra right answer. Missile, well done. Sure, and yeah. after that uh, shattering finale, uh, yeah. the end result is that this week's paupers are Ian and Clive with 19, and this week's yes, crowned yes. princes are Paul and Russell with 21. Mm -hmm. All right. So, flowers and champagne for our winners, utter derision for our losers, uh, but that's not quite it. Several years ago, at the start of the programme, you may remember, we asked the panellists to come up with some wacky captions to their photographs. Uh, Paul and Russell, what did you think of for this one? I've got a good one. Princess Anne Chuck's boots. <laughs> <laughs> How did you manage to come up with that one? Yeah. Uh, no, Princess no, Anne no. launches new BSB Sky satellite dish. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Ian and Clive, what about yours? It's, it's make me Prime Minister or the kid gets it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, uh, he's, re he actually, he's reading it out there, but it's, it's slightly longer in his version. <laughs> I tell you, uh, make me Prime Minister, the first man in the... Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes and on that uh, delightful note, we say uh, thank you to you, uh, our guests, Ian Hislop and Clive Anderson, uh, Paul Merton and Russell Davies. And I leave you with the first photograph of Mrs. Thatcher's new reshuffled cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, following the International Weightlifting Championships in Peking, fears are expressed that athletes may be resorting to steroids to improve their performance. <laughs> Good night.